those of you who are uh, live with us uh, in person here today and then uh, the live stream audience as you uh, come on and start to come in, uh, I want to give opportunity for, um, for the live stream audience to start to gather um, and uh, have an opportunity to, to start with us so that uh, uh, you won't be behind. Uh, we are thankful for uh, all of those of you who have uh, who joined in. Um, we've been gone now for um, we've been gone now for um, a few weeks as we've been on uh, a little hiatus, vacation, and uh, so it is good to be uh, back in uh, the house. Uh, of the Lord in our um, uh, in our Bible study, uh, thank God for the privilege of being able to uh, to still gather together. I think by now most of us know, even though the the news media and all of them are not uh, they're not addressing COVID in any way, shape, or form like they did the first time around. Uh, COVID is still a very real problem. And so it's just a blessing to be able uh, to gather together and to, to reassemble from uh, the time that we've had off. Beautiful day today, a little warm, but, but uh, I'm glad I'm saved so I don't have to worry about it getting hotter. So we want to, uh, I'm just kind of trying to take a little time to give our audience time to start, people start to gather, realize that we're on, and, um, and then we're going to to dive into the lesson, try to do about uh, uh, 35, 40 minutes worth of lesson. Um, I think it's I think it's more uh, conducive to the live stream uh, if we do about uh, 35, 40 minutes that hold people's attention. Some of our attention span is not that long, uh, but we're gonna give it a try. See if we can if we can uh, hold on. I will say that we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 6 uh, tonight, uh, whether you have uh, a handout or not. Uh, we're in Ephesians chapter 6, and I will um, <clears throat> try to see if we can kind of uh, consolidate where we are and then move forward from there, since this is a lesson we were working on when we went on break. Let's open with a word of prayer, and then we're going to move forward. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come humbly before you just now. We thank you, O oh God, for the privilege of coming to study your word. Uh, we thank you that you watched over us last night while we slumbered and slept. And then early this morning, you, you uh, allowed us to awaken and see a new day and, uh, and then to serve you throughout this day. And right now, God, we just want to say thank you. We know that it was not by any uh, good that we have done that we made it this far. But it is by your grace and by your mercy uh, that we are still here. Thank you for the grace that is ours through your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the relationship that is ours because of him and the penalty that he paid for our sins. And so, God, we ask now that you would bless us as we uh, go through this time of study, that you would lead, guide, and direct uh, our thoughts and then we ask, oh God, that what we learn uh, will also become what we live. Uh, bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So uh, when, when last we met, we were discussing uh, the armor of God. The, the lesson is faith in action, but the... Um, the, the totality of the lesson uh, from Ephesians 6, 10 through 20 uh, is about how to, uh, how to put on the whole armor of God, what that armor is and how to, how to put on the armor of God. And so we have, we've gone through uh, some of this lesson already. Uh, we talked about knowing the enemy and, and I don't think that by now it's any surprise to anyone that the devil is the enemy. 
the Bible says that we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh, but against uh, principalities and powers and wickedness in, in high places. We, we are fighting a spiritual battle. And, and if you're going to fight a spiritual battle, then you have to have spiritual weapons. And so we are given the, the armor of God because the leader of the fight against the people of God is the devil. I think that it's important uh, as we, again, uh, seek to consolidate where we are for us to kind of remember that whenever we are in a battle, that it's really not about us even though we're in the battle. Uh, Satan's goal is always uh, to be able uh, to accuse uh, the righteous before God. And so he doesn't go after uh, you. He doesn't cause havoc and create havoc in your life, create confusion in your life because he has something against you. Uh, you are just a pawn in the game. And he wants to be able to cause us to fail so he can run back to God and say, see, they ain't all you thought they were. See, you, you got all of this, you know, put all this work and effort and energy into them and you're so proud of them. They're they the crown of your creation and, and really they ain't no good. And if, if you remember when you are at your most challenged points in life uh, that it's your opportunity to shine for God. A lot of times we think it's an opportunity to show people what we are. And really it's not an opportunity to show people what we are. It's an opportunity to show people who we are. And we want to show them that we are children of, of God. So, so Satan is, is the enemy. And we know that Satan um, uh, was an angel. Uh, he was a part of the heavenly host. <coughs> and, and yet he decided that he wanted equality with God. And so instead of getting uh, the, the recognition he was getting for where God had placed him, he ended up with nothing. Uh, and, but then Satan has some helpers, and we talked about that, that uh, Satan is not omnipresent. He cannot be everywhere at the same time. That's an attribute that only God has. Angels and, and principalities and powers are not omnipresent. They cannot be everywhere at the same time. So, so Satan has to have helpers. He's, he, has, he, has, uh, he has spirits and he has people who are in his employ. Uh, they work for him. I don't know what they get paid, uh, but, they, but they work for him. I do know the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Uh, I don't know what he's promised them, but I know what the ultimate paycheck is going to look like. But there are people who work for him. There are spirits who work for him. And we have to guard against them because, because their job is always uh, to, to lead us to uh, destruction. And listen, I, tell, I, I used to tell um, um, uh, Christians, and, I, and I'll tell you tonight, that um, you, you, ought, you, ought not, you ought not get to the point to where you think uh, that you're so much that the devil won't bother you. Um, or, or, that, or that you're so strong that you can fight anything that the devil brings your way. <clears throat> He's been doing this a long, long, long time. We don't know how long. Uh, we, don't, we, don't, we don't know all the chronology of him sinning against God, getting kicked out of heaven and all of that before, before the Adam and Eve scene. We don't know how long Adam and Eve uh, uh, it was that they were in the garden. The story is told, and if, you, if you're not careful, you start to read that story in a capsule, and, and, and you start to narrow it, and you, you start to think, well, it wasn't but a few days, but the Scripture does not tell us how long it was. I, I, I will say this, and I, don't, I, can't, I can't get into all of it tonight, but I will say this. Uh, after Cain killed Abel, and they had Seth, and all of that took place, uh, there was marrying going on. So that means that they had to have been there long enough for other people 
to be born. I, I, don't, I don't know whether Cain and Abel were the, were the, were the first and, and of many. Uh, I, I don't know how all of the chronology works with that, but I know that Adam and Eve, everybody comes from Adam and Eve. So if, if uh, one of those boys was able to marry somebody later on, he had to be marrying his sister. Which was not uncommon in that day. Don't want to marry your sister today. I don't know if it's legal today, but you, in that day it was legal. So, so you, don't, you have to be careful because Satan has, Satan has people who work for him. And then Satan has abilities. Satan, Satan thinks, fast, thinks faster and better than we do. He has better anticipation than we do. The reason we have to stay connected to the word is because if we take off on our own, Satan can trick us. When we start talking about I can do it myself, you're on your way to trouble. All right? So then if you're going to fight Satan, we, we dealt with knowing the equipment. And I'm on page um, 11 if you're trying to keep up with me on this handout. I'm on page 11. And I'm just trying to consolidate some of what we've done already. Get us back, get our juices flowing back again as we move forward. All right? So we, we talked about know the equipment. And, and that's what we did with Ephesians 6, uh, 13, and 7, 13 through 17. And we talked about knowing the equipment. So that's where we started getting into the... Uh, the, the, the armor of God. Uh, and, and isn't this something that the, that the, uh, the primary uh, piece of armor that the scripture says that we need first is truth. Man, how much, how much difficulty could we av uh, avoid just with the truth? Um, I, I was, I, I've had, I've had uh, uh, people say something to me about uh, the whole, you know, I dealt with the tithing issue and, and all that. And there are people who are having a problem with that. Uh, and, and I'm saying you just got to be willing to accept the truth. I, I, know that, I know that tithing has been a staple of the, of the teaching in the, in the modern church, in, in the church, ever since, I can, ever since I can remember. And I have no problem with it. I think we just have to put it in its right place. Tithing is a ceiling. I mean, it's a floor, not a ceiling. I, and and I, I stick by that truth. God did not say come up to tithing and then quit. Tithe up to 10 and then quit. That, that's, that, that really, that really is, you know, that's, that's kind of insulting. I would think to God that we'll say to him, I give you this, but no more. And I'm only giving you this because you're demanding it. And if I don't give you this 10, you're going to mess with my 90. When, when, when really God says, I've given it all to you, and, and if my grace has been sufficient for you, you ought to be able to give me something back. And it ought to exceed, it ought to exceed 10%. 10% is a starting place. That's truth. Some people have a problem with truth, but if we, listen, if you, put, if you put on the girdle of truth, everything else, everything else falls in place. You, if, you're not, if you're not properly girded with truth, None of the rest of it's going to make any difference. If, you, if people can tell you all kind of stuff in church, all the, uh, all, everything else falls apart. How many times have we seen it where one lie destroys a whole lot of stuff? Just one. One lie creates conflict. Truth is, truth is, the, is the glue that holds everything together. The, so much so that Jesus said this about himself. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Truth is what holds everything to, together. And, and uh, it, it's funny because, it's funny because uh, it talks about, it's, it says the girdle of truth. And, of course, in our modern culture, when you hear girdle, uh, that, that normally is a, a, a garment of attire for women. In our modern culture, well, in the distant culture, maybe, maybe, maybe in the years back. Okay, y'all, see, y'all messing with me. We, we, we freshly back, and already they starting in here, y'all. Um, I, know, I know women now, the, the, the level of modesty ain't what it used to be, and so everybody don't wear girdles, but that's, that's what it used to be. But in, in, in that culture, in Eastern culture, a girdle was a, it was a garment uh, that was designed uh, to create, to keep everything together. Uh, it, 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 was, it was where the sword was carried. It, 
it, it, it kept, it was a protective, it was part of the protective garment. And if, and if you, would, you did not want to go to war without, without a girdle. Now, now I don't want, I don't want to get y'all too far gone, but those of us who played sports, males who played sports, there's, there is, there is a, a tire that a male wears when he plays sports that are des that's designed to protect vital areas, to help protect vital areas. Um, uh, and, and if he does not protect those vital areas, the outcome ain't going to be good. The outcome is not going to be good. Um, and, and, and listen, the, the, the girdle of truth is designed to protect vital areas for the believer. Truth protects. You, you, don't, have to, you, don't, have to, you don't have to worry about nobody if you, if you just stand on the truth. The truth is there to protect us. And so we talked about the, 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 the girdle of truth. We talked about the, the breastplate uh, of righteousness. And we talked about the, the, the coat of metal and how the, how the metal pieces overlap each other uh, to prevent uh, piercing, to, present, to, present, to prevent piercing. Say that three times real fast. It is designed to prevent piercing. And, and, uh, and we know, uh, and we know that, that the imagery is that the devil has fiery darts. Um, I, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a hunter, uh, but, and not only do I have a hunting rifle, I have a hunting bow and that bow has a point on it that is designed to pierce the hide and, and the skin and the bone and go on through. It will literally go through a deer, through vital organs and come out the other side because he doesn't wear anything metal to protect him and 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 listen that there, there are a lot of there are a lot of believers who are willing to walk around exposed they that's that's their that's their bulletproof vest righteousness and and they they refuse to wear it and then wonder how why they get wounded the breastplate of righteousness is designed to to prevent piercing the devil always wants to pierce us. Uh, even, listen, listen, can you think, of, think about it like this? Even when Jesus was dying on the cross, they pierced him. That's just, that's just the, part of the devil's M.O. He wants to cut you. He wants, he wants you to bleed. Uh, and, and the breastplate of righteousness is designed to protect us uh, from, from piercing. So then we talked about the shoes of the gospel. Uh, the Roman soldier wore sandals, it says, with hobnails in the soles to give him better footing for battle. And if we're going to stand and withstand, then we need the shoes of the gospel because uh, we, have the, we have peace with God in Romans 5.1 that comes from the gospel, right? We need, we need not fear the attack of Satan or men. We must be at peace with God and with each other if we are to defeat the devil. That's James 4, 1 through 7. But the shoes also had another meaning. Uh, we must be prepared each day to share the gospel of peace with a lost world. So then the most victorious Christian is a witnessing Christian. And, and when you talk about the shoes of the gospel, shoes automatically give, to me, give the image of, of going. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a country, I'm a country boy. I was born and raised in the country. Town, Ter Terrell, when I grew up, didn't have 12,000 people. Uh, but I was, I have never, and I know that we have the image of country people being barefoot. I, I've never liked going barefooted. Never. I don't to this day. I got house shoes in the house. I don't walk around barefooted because my feet don't like it. So if I'm getting ready to go somewhere, I'm going to put on shoes. And, and believers who are going to be moved. Wait a minute. This is a missionary journey. Missionary itself implies movement. Uh, too often we want to sit. And, 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 and let me tell you something. One of the worst, one of the worst uh, habits that the church has is sitting and waiting for people to come. Jesus said go out into the highways and the byways. In, in the parable where he talked about the man who threw the dinner. And, and people didn't come, and he told them, you go out into the highways and to the byways and compel men to come. Our job is not to sit, and if they happen to come by, 
have something for them, but we have shoes, the shoes of the gospel, because we are on a missionary journey. Jesus did not tell the, he told, the, the, watch this, he told his disciples, tarry in Jerusalem until the spirit comes, then you go. And when we, when you look in, when you look in, in Acts, what starts to happen is as the, as the, the ministry begins to grow and progress and flourish in Jerusalem, God starts to stir the nest and create, um, persecutions and tensions and difficulties because what it does is it causes them to spread out and as they begin to spread the gospel begins to spread we shoes are for walking men who don't have feet or don't have the ability to walk don't need shoes and the shoe of the believer is the gospel you, you will end up with a lot of, with a lot of, of sore feet and, and hurt feelings if you don't go with the shoes of the gospel. You, that's, that's, your, that's your, listen, that, that, that's, that's your security in your going is that you take the gospel with you. That, that's what changes men's lives. Social programs, who, who, the political scene, whoever's in office, um, um, how much money you get on a job, what car you live in, oh, what car you drive, what house you live in. I hope you don't live in the car. Um, what house you live in, what car you drive, what neighborhood your house is in. That's, that's, not, that's not what saves people. The gospel is what saves men. It's, the gospel is what makes the difference. And the gospel can save a billionaire and a homeless man at the same time. And, and, the, and neither one is any better than, than the other. All right? And so we have to take, we have to take, the sh we put on the shoes of the gospel. And a lot, lot of people, a lot of people, now, now I, I've been accused of not, of not tipping around issues. I don't, when, when I preach, I don't, I, I've, had preach, I've had preachers come to me uh, after preaching a sermon and say, man, ain't no way in the world I say that. If it's the truth, I got on my gospel shoes. If it's gospel, my job is not to spare people's feelings. It's to save their lives through the gospel. And if, and, and, and matter of fact, uh, Prophet and I were talking about this just yesterday. Uh, he said, if you always go to church and leave happy, ain't no preaching going on. If you never get convicted, he said either nothing was said or you, didn't, or you wouldn't hear it. It makes good sense to me. If the gospel is preached, listen, listen, we, you used to, preachers make fun of each other because, you know, preachers have these certain gyrations. And I know, I know I've had people come to me and say th stuff to me about stuff, you know, movements and stuff that I do when I'm preaching and all that. Sometimes it's because the gospel is hitting the preacher just as hard as it's hitting you. Sometimes when you can't sit still in the pew, he can't sit still in the pulpit. Because the gospel touches everybody. All right? And so he talks about wearing the shoes. And then talked about the shield of faith. Um, and, and I have talked about um, uh, numerous times about how that shield works against uh, the attacks. And, and I, I use that, uh, that illustration from um, uh, the 300 uh, and, and the movie 300 where they, they are under attack. And they, 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 they overlap those shields and, and no spear, no, no arrows, no nothing could, could pierce those shields because those shields were overlapped. And each man's shield not only protected him but protected the man next to him. You all remember me doing that illustration? And, and so what we have as believers is we have a shield as well, but it ain't just for us. It, it, is, it says the shield of faith. Your faith is not just for you. It is to be shared. It is to be shared. And, and, and when, we, when we collectively share our faith, we form a protective barrier against attacks. People always talk about uh, uh, spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare. So you know what spiritual warfare is, really? Spiritual warfare, is, uh, at least its, its intent is, it, its intent is to wound one of us 
and, 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 then, and then have some of the rest of us uh, have an issue with the one who's been wounded. And, and so we stop protecting each other. It's to wound so that we start to become introverted, self-protected, rather than protect each other. Uh, one of the things, I, one, one, of the, one of the examples I give with that movie is the, the, the guy who comes who's humpbacked and, and uh, small in stature and all that. And he wants to be one of the soldiers. And, and Leonidas tells him, hold, hold the shield up. And when he gets ready to hold the shield up, he can only hold the shield up so far. And when he tells him, no, you, we can't do it, he said, well, I can protect myself. He says, it's not, it, you, it's not protecting just you. You got to be able to protect your shield protects the man on, the, on either side of you as well. And that's what happens with a lot of us as believers. We think, well, it's my faith. I'm, I got my own faith. I don't have to worry about nobody else. But, but listen, it, it is designed to, your faith is designed to protect not only you, but it is designed to, to protect other brothers and sisters in Christ who we are in this warfare with. And, and um, uh, our military, our military uh, awards uh, medals, Purple Hearts, and Bronze Stars, and all that for, for valentry in battle, where one soldier disregards his own safety, his own life, his, his own limb, and, and, and rescues or, or, or saves others who have been injured on the battlefield and but for him or her nowadays would lose his life. Our, our military uh, awards medals. God doesn't give us physical, physical medals, but God rewards faithfulness with more, with more than medals could ever do. And, and, and one, of the things that we, one of the things that we used to see in church that we don't see much anymore is people of faith who will put their faith on the line for somebody else. You know, the, unfortunately today in church, we got a lot of I got mine, get yours type attitudes. And when we have to put our faith on the line, we have to, we, listen, we share our faith with one another because our faith is supposed to make us all stronger. And if I can keep the devil, if I can help keep the devil from getting you, it'll help him not be able to get to me. Because if we stand side by side with our shields and, and, and I don't pr properly protect you and you get wounded, then I'm, then I'm vulnerable too because I lose the protection of your shield. So we have the shield of faith in verse 16. Uh, and and um, uh, th it talks about the, uh, the, the shield being constructed uh, that an entire line of soldiers could interlock shields and march into the enemy like a solid wall. Mm. This suggests that we Christians are not in the battle alone. The faith mentioned here is not saving faith, but rather what? Living faith. A trust in the promises and the power of God. Saving faith is between me and God or you and God. Living faith is between all of us. It's inter interchangeably. We we interact with each other. It's not just about us and God, but living faith, we got to do that together. And without living faith, without living faith, the Bible says that faith without works is dead. You, you, you can't work without faith. It's dead. Uh, you you, you got to have, if you got faith, you got to have works. If you got works, you got to have faith. They're Siamese twins. They're connected. They're co-joined. You can't have one without the other. All right? And, and, and like so many co-joined twins, if you try to separate them, you end up losing one or both. Hello, somebody. All right, so then we talked about the helmet of salvation, verse 17. Uh, he wants to attack our mind. That's how he defeated Eve. That's how he defeated Eve. He attacked her mind. All right, and the helmet refers to the mind controlled by whom? By God. It's, it's too bad that many Christians have the idea that the intellect is not important when in reality it plays a vital role in Christian growth, service, and victory. Let me talk about intellect for a minute. Believers, believers, we ought to have, every believer ought to have a constant, consistent study habit. 
We ought to have, it, you ought not depend on the only meal from the word of God you get be from me on Monday night or Sunday. Now, is, is there anybody in here who ate yesterday physically and, go, and ate today physically but not going to eat again until next Sunday? Physically. Some of us, we're going to go, listen, some of us going to stop on the way home and get something. Some of us got something at the house waiting on us already. Look, looking, at the, looking at the wife, I said, boy, I'm gonna, when I get out of here, I'm going to get them beans. Them beans on, I got beans on the stove. I got, I got chicken in the, in the oven. I got, uh, we, we understand what eating does to this body. Now, now let, let, me, let, me make, let me see if I can make this clear to you. We understand it's good and it's bad. Whether we eat bad or not, we know what bad eating does to us. You ever heard anybody say, well, you don't got high blood pressure, but boy, I sure love my ribs. I ain't going to give up my ribs. I'm just going to have to deal with the high blood pressure. Oh, we, listen, listen. Satan messes with our mind. And, 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 uh, and we put on the helmet of salvation uh, because we want to have the right mind. We, we have to, we have to, 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 have the right mind because if you don't, uh, you you're gonna be you're gonna be taught wrong, uh, and you're gonna you're gonna miss you're gonna miss some meals, and it's going to affect you spiritually. All right, so so when we when we deal with the helmet of salvation, uh, it, we we got to realize that it plays a vital role in Christian growth, service, and in victory. You got to be learning. The word. I, I, I said, there are a couple of things that I'll say. I'll say them again in case you haven't heard them before. You ought to have more than just a King James Bible. Um, most people, no, no, this, I, this, is, this, is, this is not general for everybody, but this is, this is kind of it's kind of generalized. Most people have more than one of, of many things in their, in their house. Especially if, you, if you're fond of it. I love watches. I can wear a different watch every day for a long time. <laughs> Never wear the same one. I love watches. I love some other things, too. I got more than one. I'm going to let y'all work on that one. So, listen, if you're, a tennis, if you're a person that's into tennis shoes, you got more than one. You got more than one pair. I don't mean more than one like the left one or the right one. You got more than one pair. If, if you like jewelry, you, you got more than one ring, more than one set of earrings. More, you know, you, no, more, very few, I don't know of any woman that come to church every week with the same earrings on. No matter what she wear. Because you, you, you y'all know what y'all be like. Be like, no matter what she wear, she going to wear them earrings. <laughs> now, if, if she got diamond studs or something like that, maybe that. But she going to have some other ones that go with it most most kids. We, we, we have more, we have several, we have, we have a collection of what we like. If you like purses, sisters, you got more than one purse. If you like shoes, you, you might have as many shoes as Imelda Marcos. I know who Imelda Marcos is, don't you? <laughs> I was, okay. If brothers, I mean, men, if men who like ties got ties. Men who like suits got suits. You like shirts, got shirts. We but we got one Bible, one translation, and no commentary, no, no, no dictionary, uh, no, no illustrated books, no, 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 uh, uh, no culture, context and culture books, no, no so, so then, so then when we read something in the Bible, um, and we got a, I don't need nothing but the Bible mentality, we misinterpret stuff. Because we have not sharpened our minds. And then when the devil comes and our mind is not sharp, um, anything that's not sharp, if it's designed for cutting and it's not sharp, it, it takes more work to use it. You get a dull knife and try to cut something with it, it's work. And if our minds are not sharp, we can't cut through the mess and the minutia 
that Satan wants to throw. He wants us confused. He wants us clouded. And you have to, you have, to have your mind sharp. You, you have to have on the helmet of salvation. You have to be learning. Listen, you ought to know when the scripture says work out your own salvation, it, it's, not, it's not work out to be saved. It's, it's, it's really work up to where, where the Lord has saved you. That makes sense to you? It's not work out to be saved because if God has saved you, you're saved. It's, it's, in other words, it's living up to what God has done. That's how you work out your soul, your, your soul salvation. You live in a way that lives up to. God has saved you. And listen, when he saves you, he saves you to the utmost. You, you are as saved as you ever going to be, but you ain't always living up to it. And so we, as we work down here, we, we're trying to live up to the salvation that God has placed in us. And you can't do it without knowledge. And you know what's crazy? If we went to a doctor's office and on the wall he said, I don't believe in education, we would turn around, go back out the door. Come on now. You, how dare we? I mean, man, listen, if we were laying on the, if we were laying on the uh, operating table and the doctor was talking to us and we laying on the table and he's getting ready to put the mask on us and tell us to count backwards, and, and just before he does that, since they got a little time, you say, hey, doc, where'd you go to school? He said, oh, I, I, I ain't never been to school. You laying on the table looking up at him. He said, I ain't never been to school. I just, you know, I, I, I pulled up a couple of things on YouTube and, and, uh, and looked at it. You know, I watched them dissect a couple of frogs when I was in high school in, in uh, biology. And, and, uh, and I, I think I got this. He's going to be like, man, if you don't let me up off this table, let me go find a real doctor. And yet we let people who have no biblical knowledge tell us stuff every day. The most important part of us, we too often expose to people who don't have the gospel, don't have it right. And it, and it confuses the mind. That's the reason every time you look up, new church popping up. That's, that's the reason every time you look around, somebody talking about, uh, I don't believe that no more. Every time you look around, somebody talking about uh, what, what, what new religion they after. They done found, they done found the real one. <laughs> they, even, they even think we so dumb, now they start calling it, uh, oh, it's non-denominational. Oh, that's a denomination. Oh, I ain't Baptist. I ain't Christian. I ain't. I ain't. Uh, I'm not. I'm not Church of God in Christ. We non-denominational, which has become a denomination. And the truth of the matter is, we need the gospel, and we have to be sharp in it. You can't just depend on me. You have to be sharp in it. So that's that's how that's that's you know you know uh, uh, I, I wouldn't do it to y'all but I I I know a preacher was preaching and he said turn with me to the 235th number of Psalms and people were turning in their Bibles turning in their Bibles turning you know how many 235th you know how many they ain't but 150 <laughs> <laughs> but that was people who did not have a grasp of their own Bible. And I promise you, if I did it on Sunday morning, I won't do it. But if I did it on Sunday morning, somebody would start turning. They'd be looking at their phone like. And then they, and then they start turning, talk to the person next to them. I don't have but 150. Did they leave some of mine off? So it's on us. It's on, it's on us to put on the helmet of, of, of salvation to, to, so that we know uh, the words. Yeah, you, you, you know the word. Uh, you, ha you know it for yourself. So you can, you, can witness, you can witness with me what I'm preaching, and you don't have to sit there and say, I wonder if that's true or not. The sharper, I, I don't know, I don't know, uh, I, I, I guess there are some preachers uh, that, that want their members dumb. I, I don't want, I, listen, 
anything that's untrained is hard to handle. Get a dog, never teach the dog good manners. Hard to handle. Get a horse, the horse don't know who the boss is. Gonna have a problem. You can have a bird. If he think he can get away with it, he'll peck at you. Anything that's not trained is hard to handle. And the people of God have to be trained in the word of God because it helps us to, to, uh, to, to, to live in this life. And live in it together. Live in it in harmony. Be able to practice some of the things we've been talking about where, where we stand for each other and where we, we are there for each other and we, we love one another, we forgive one another. It ain't that we ain't going to have problems. But, but if you got the gospel, it helps you know how to handle problems when you have them. Because you're going to have them. And so, uh, I, that's, I think I'm about at, I said 40 minutes, didn't I? I'm, I'm at 45 right now. All right, so, um, um, so the last part of page 15 says, the Christian who studies his Bible and then moves over to page 16 and learns the meaning of Bible doctrines is not going to be led astray too easily. Right? We need to be taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. We are to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You don't want it to be said of you, as Scripture says, that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. And that's what you see a lot of times when people, people doing all kind of crazy stuff. They have a zeal for God, but it's not, it, does, it doesn't come from knowledge of God. And, and we, we see idol worship and, and all kinds of stuff. I, I've told y'all some of the craziness. I, I've seen people in church services bring them a tub of water and put their feet in the water. And when the bubbles come up, they're they supposed to be prophesying on the life of that person from the bubbles that came up in the water. I've, listen, I've, 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 seen, I, I've seen people, uh, <laughs> I've seen people who who think it's uh, a sin uh, if you don't cover that communion table with, with the white cloth. And, and, uh, and I know a church, I don't call them names, but I know a church that used to go out and bury the, whatever communion was left over, they go out in the back of the church and dig a hole and bury it. That's from lack of knowledge. I have no idea. I think, I think it's because they, you know, they, it's the body and blood of the Lord. So they put him back in the grave, I guess. He ain't in there. But that's the kind of that's the kind of craziness. This whole black Hebrew thing, that's the kind of craziness that comes up. People get a people get one little piece, one little piece. And, and they twist it so bad, and they build a whole doctrine off one little piece. And, and let, let, me, let, me, let me help you with this. Uh, uh, if, you, if you build something and work, when you start that foundation, if that foundation is crooked, the rest of the building is going to be off. So they start with a, with a messed up foundation and build a whole religious community, so-called religious community. Cult is what it really is. Off of that one belief. I, I, I told them that, you know, they, 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 we worship Yeshua. Yeshua. Yeshua is, is uh, Hebrew. If you translate it to the English, it's Joshua. If, if you translate it uh, to, to uh, Aramaic, uh, it's Jesus. Greek is Jesus. Mexican is Jesus. I, I've said this before. We don't name our sons jo Jesus. We named them Joshua. Same name. Jesus, Joshua, Jesus, uh, Yeshua, uh, all of those are the same person. Jesus, born in Bethlehem, reared in Nazareth, lived in the Galilee, performed miracles. Friday went to, to Calvary, died, stayed dead three days, got up Sunday morning, now sits at the right hand of God, making intercession for us soon to return. Same Jesus. So whatever you want, call him. And you know, and you know um, 
uh, I heard, uh, and I, I don't know, maybe some of y'all, uh, I, I love sometimes listening to uh, Farrakhan, because sometimes uh, Louis Farrakhan, uh, I'd be like, boy, he sounds like a black preacher. Uh, but he, I was looking at, a, I was looking at a, a video he did uh, here just not too long ago, and in, and in that video he said, um, uh, we call him, uh, what do they call him? Uh, Allah. They call him Allah. Christians call him God. He said, if we're talking about the same person, why do we trip so much about the name we call him? Now, some of the things they believe about Allah, I don't believe. Some of the things they believe about God, I don't believe. But if they're talking about the creator of the ends of the earth, I believe in him. I just call him a different name. Now, some of you, some of you have experienced that. You have, you have uh, relationships with people who call you by a different name. Doesn't change who you are. Now, those of us who have children, we got multiple names. If you worked in a if you worked in a professional career, you 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 most likely have multiple names. Uh, they don't you know, uh, baby. I suspect that most people that where you where you work used to work. Do they call you baby? Do they call you baby? Uh uh, because that's that's not your that's not your work name. Most people most people that I that I that I haven't known. That, I, that I've only known um, in the last 20 years or so have to ask me what my first name is. And then you hear guess all the time about what my middle name is because it's a K. So they start, they start gra grabbing up K names. And, and some, I got, I got friends, if you said BK, they'd be like, who's that? And you say, you know, uh, Pastor Jones. You, oh, they'd be like, oh, Vince. Because I, I knew them in a different era. I knew them a different time in my life. I don't expect my mama to call me Pastor V.K. Jones. She's going to say, boy, if you don't get over here. <laughs> we, we're known by different names. But if we're talking about the same person. And, and, and so that, it, that's, that's some of that knowledge that we have to have. And Satan wants us messed up in the head. Because if he can mess up, if he can mess up, our head, if he can mess up our head, he can manipulate us. That's all he did with Eve. He just manipulated her. Messed up her head. And, and if, she had, if she had just followed the instructions she had been given, or if she just turned to her husband, because he was right there. If she had just turned to her husband and said, like like uh, 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 the mayor on uh, Welcome Back Carter, that uh, Welcome Back Carter said, handle it, handle it. If she'd have just turned to her husband and said, handle it. God told you, God gave you the instructions about this. You talk, or told Satan, if you want to talk about that tree, talk to my husband. But he manipulated her. And, and then Adam standing right there with his mouth clamped shut when he should have intervened. And it caused all that came after that. We got to be sharp in the word. Listen, the, what, so, some of us won't even open the door for Jehovah's Witness because we don't want them to challenge with, us with the word. I'll open that door in a minute when I feel like play, when I feel like being entertained. I'll open that door in a minute. They quit, I think they put me on the blacklist, Susie. They don't come by my house no more. I think they put me on the blacklist. Don't, do not go. You know, you know if, you, if, you, if you really give them the word, they'll X you off their list. They'll stop coming to your house. Oh, yeah, they'll, they'll put you on the do not disturb list. But most of us, they don't mind knocking on our door. So we have, we have to know the word. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop right there. All right? So we're going to stop at um, uh, middle ways of page 16. Is that where we are? First, after the first paragraph, page 16. That's where we're going to stop. We'll pick up there on next week. All right? Um, I 
All right. Any anything else before we uh, sign off? All right. Let's let's uh, let's have a word of prayer so we can close in prayer with our um, our, our live stream audience. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the time that we've shared together tonight. Thank you for the, your word, the truth of your word, the power uh, of your word, and then thank you for understanding of your word. God, continue to bless us and strengthen us uh, in the way that you would have us to go uh, so that we will have uh, a faith that is an active faith, uh, that, that is alive and, and that, is, that is effective in, in this world that we live in. We pray for those that are sick among us, those that are bereaved, um, we express, especially pray for those within this particular congregation uh, who are, are dealing with particular illnesses. We, we know, God, that you are a healer for all of them. Uh, you are a healer. You can heal them all at the same time. And so we pray, uh, Lord, uh, for your healing, but then we ask that your will be done. And, and then, God, where they are uh, down, where they may be depressed or where they may be concerned, uh, we ask that you would strengthen their faith. And then, God, we pray uh, that as we leave this place, uh, that you would dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for saving us. And thank you for using us as instruments in your service. In Jesus' name we pray, with love and thanksgiving, amen. Amen. All right. Hey, Miss Felicia. Yes. How you doing?